want to proclaim that this is the blueprint. It took less than a month for six of the officers involved in Tyree Nichols traffic stop to lose their jobs at the Memphis Police Department and less than a week passed between the time five of them were fired and indicted in Nichols death. Renowned civil rights attorney Ben Crump called it swift justice. But as WRG investigator Zanetta Lowe explains, advocates pushing for long-term reform say that may not happen quickly and only true transformation would make Memphis the blueprint. In a city no stranger to struggle and strife, Tyree Nichols' death is birth demand for Memphis and its police department I put my hands to head in a new direction. Are you to go home? Tyree Nichols was pulled over, tased, and beaten by Memphis police officers on January 7th. He died three days later. Less than a month after, six police officers and three EMTs involved were fired. No longer can you tell us we got to wait six months to a year. Five officers were indicted on charges, including second degree murder, aggravated assault, and aggravated kidnapping. No more can you tell us that anymore because with these five black officers, you all moved it swiftly. Two months after Nichols' death, a total of 13 officers faced discipline. Multiple agencies on the local, state, and federal level launched investigations. We have to make the point exceedingly clear. We now have the blueprint, America, and we won't accept less going forward in the future. But if Memphis is to become the blueprint for how other communities handle cases of deadly force, some already working for change say we have to start from scratch, building from the ground up before becoming a model for any other city. It was absolutely wonderful that the chief uh, moved swiftly. But what do you do now? What do we do to realize that, wait a minute, there is some work to be done in this department in changing the culture. After spending more than 30 years with the Memphis Police Department, James Kirkwood retired as a colonel in 2017. What would that blueprint look like in your eyes? Everybody will be a part of creating a, a, a crime strategy or a strategic safe community plan other than individuals uh, who really, you know, not hearing the voices of the people. Throughout his law enforcement career, Kirkwood, who's also a pastor, says community outreach and collaboration was critical to success. He's also the president of Memphis's Civilian Law Enforcement Review Board, or CLERB, where he's pushing for more personnel and power. This, as a bill moving through the legislature, would ban community oversight review boards and allow cities to create their own police advisory groups. When we resist uh, putting in strong civilian oversight to make sure that police are accountable for their actions. We are ignoring the cries of the people. You are dying! You are living. Amber Sherman led protests following Nichols' death and continues to challenge local leaders and lawmakers to change laws and policies surrounding policing. Real tangible action to prevent these incidents from happening is us ending the multi-level gang unit, ending the organized crime unit, ending the use of those task force during you know, these protectual traffic stops and law enforcement doing them all together. While that's still on the table, the Memphis City Council recently passed five other ordinances related to oversight, transparency, and traffic stops, including a requirement to only use marked vehicles. A day after releasing video of nickel stop, MPD scrapped its Scorpion unit, and now the Justice Department is probing specialized units. While you're investigating, in the use of the task force. By keeping them in place, you're saying, oh, we don't, you know, expect citizens to, we don't believe citizens, we don't respect them enough to actually take their concerns seriously. Josh Spickler leads criminal justice reform organization Just City, which has pushed for additional changes like mandated cooperation with CLERB and an end to so-called hotspot policing. Our priorities are about sending people with guns into our communities to try to address harm and need that they just simply can't address. And the result of that is sometimes what we saw in that Tyree Nichols video. All right, all right, all right. Seeing fewer of such interactions, Spickler says, requires us to reconsider our needs. I think we need to be asking ourselves, what is safety? Let's talk about what safety really means to people uh, in communities that definitely are experiencing violence and harm frequently. 
But when people show you who they are... How they Memphis answers that question, he says, has a lot to do with the city's top cop and the mayor who hires them. So Memphians themselves later this year will have a voice by way of their vote in how the city develops its own blueprint. It's going to take bold leadership. There's no doubt about that. This is not easy to lead a community through what needs to be a fundamental transition into something new. New for Memphis and possibly the rest of the country. We have a precedent that has been set here in Memphis and we intend to hold this blueprint for all America from this day forward. I really truly believe my son was sitting here on an assignment yes, <laughs> from God. The catalyst for change leading to the creation of a blueprint for others to build upon. Zanetta Lowe, WREG, News Channel 3. Now, the city council is scheduled to take a final vote on a combined ordinance next Tuesday. The summer concern might just roll back some of the reform efforts previously passed. The county commission has taken up several measures related to police reform. The DA's office has also announced some changes related to transparency. And finally, several lawmakers and reform advocates met with Justice Department leaders earlier this week requesting what's called a pattern or practice investigation into MPD. We'll keep you posted.